Good morning. And a warm welcome to everyone here this morning, especially to any visitors who may be worshipping with us. We hope you find peace and blessing in our time of worship here this morning. Just to draw your attention to a few intimations, um, firstly, the prayer box in the vestibule is available again, so if you can write down your prayer requests and pop them in the box, um, the prayer group will pray for that person or situation. Also, um, we're already got, we've got two new members in the choir, uh, Myrtle and Liz, um, but we could be doing with some more members. So if you enjoy singing and would like to find out more, then please speak to Jane or Martin uh, for more information. We especially need altos and uh, tenors. And you don't need to read music in case you're worried about that. Um, you don't need to read music at all. There's still places for the Holy Land pilgrimage next spring, um, so for more information, please speak to David. Um, we need a, a new health and safety officer due to Bobby Robertson retiring. And we thank you to Bobby for his excellent work, especially during the pandemic. So if anyone has the skills or would be willing to learn this role, please speak to Stuart or Eleanor and you do not have to be a member of the board or the Kirk Session. Also, a men's club was started before lockdown, um, and David can't coordinate this group any longer because he helps at the BBs at Lenzi Union on a Friday. So if, there, if there's anyone else or a group of men who would like to get together to start this group, then please have a think. We celebrate Harvest Sunday next Sunday, the 2nd of October, and Aileen will need help to decorate the church on Saturday, the 1st of October from 2 o'clock. So please contact Aileen, if, especially if you need a lift, and volunteers will also be needed after the harvest service to help with the delivery. Also, the University of Third Age meets on the first Thursday of each month in Lenzi Golf Club. Um, there's a number of groups who meet regularly, such as table tennis, family history, local history, and there's outings arranged by the groups, and they're keen to add more groups. So new members are always welcome, and the next meeting is in Lenzi Golf Club on Thursday the 6th of October at 12 noon and there will be a speaker at that meeting, um, and that's an intimation from Hugh Miller, who is the chairman of the University of Third Age in Lindsay. Finally, there's a cluster of songs of praise, because we are part of a new cluster of four churches going forward, um, and it's at St Mary's Kirk and Tillich next Sunday, the 2nd of October at 7 o'clock in the evening. All are welcome, and there'll be an opportunity to meet folks from other congregations within the new cluster. So these are all the intimations, and thanks be to God for the work of this church in this parish. So let's now quieten our hearts and calm our minds as the choir sing the introit. Psalm 46, 
from Eugene Peterson's The Message says, God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need him. And so we stand fearless at the cliff edge of doom and courageous in sea storm and earthquake before the rush and the roar of the oceans and the tremors that shift the mountains. For the Jacob wrestling God always fights for us, the God of angel armies forever protects us. For God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need him. So let's sing our first hymn this morning, hymn number 112, number 112, God, whose almighty word. So I meant to add to the intimations as well that come and sing, our dementia-friendly singing group meets this Tuesday in the church hall from half past one to three o'clock and all are welcome if you want a nice happy afternoon and a good sing with some fellowship. And also the, the craft and the sewing group meets on a Wednesday and it's at 10 o'clock, Elaine. Yes, 10 o'clock in the, the session room. So if you're interested in crafts or sewing or knitting, and you'd like to come along and uh, bring your craft work with you and just enjoy some fellowship and a cup of tea, then you'd be made most welcome at 10 o'clock uh, in the session room on a Wednesday. So let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we gather here on this autumn morning of the September holiday, grateful for the beauty of our world and the unique wonder this season brings. We praise you for leaves changing to brown and yellow and orange and purple. We praise you for ripe fruit trees and farmers' fields full of wheat, 
heralding the coming of the harvest. And we praise you for our daily lives, for the new routines that autumn brings, for the groups recommencing, and for children and young people settling back into nursery or school or college or university. We praise you, Creator God, that our lives have a rhythm, that each season holds different experiences, expectations, hopes, routines. And we praise you for our Lord Jesus who lived on this earth and also experienced the wonder of autumn. And who taught us that in all of life, we are never alone, for God is with us forever beside us, guiding us, supporting us, strengthening us, keeping us forever safe. But so often we forget this. So often we look at the circumstances of our life or the things that we have to do which lie ahead, piling them on top like a pile of bricks ready to topple over and we become overwhelmed and we forget that God walks beside us. We forget that God protects us. We forget that God promises to forever keep us safe in this life and in the next. So often we forget And so we ask for forgiveness. And with all that has happened in the past few weeks within our world and and all that is happening within each of our own lives presently, our own personal circumstances, help us through this act of worship today. Help us, Lord God, to, to know your presence with us in a deeper way to know that we are never alone, to know you as the most loving of parents, and to sense something of the love that you have for each one of us, this day and forevermore. And we ask all these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught of your love, who when he lived in this earth, he also taught us to pray, saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. You're getting a big boy. Yeah. Oh, what have you got there? A duck? Oh. I know somebody else that likes ducks at the moment. Yeah. So what's your duck called? It's a duck. <gasps> Hello. You're getting a big boy, aren't you? Yes. Hi. You okay? Yeah. You're getting a big boy. Yeah. Yeah, yes, you're getting a big boy too, that's right, yes, yes. So is, is, there, is there going to be a crash today, Margaret? Is that, or are they just going to play? Yes, I, yeah, I don't know if you might want to go out. And it's a, because it's a September holiday, of course, the Sunday school's off today, so, um, but I don't know if you want to. You can, you can have a wee think about it, you see if you want to go out or not. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a story for you this morning, and well, do you know, when I went into the, my, the room, the vestry it's called this morning, Aileen had left a book on the table, and she'd got it, you know the lady that sits just behind there with the blonde hair, um, and uh, she, well, she's not here today, I don't think, is she? Well, there she is, there, you usually sit there, Aileen, <laughs> all right, <laughs> well, she'd left this book, because she was in it, have you... Uh huh. She was in Iona, Have you, Iona, which is a beautiful island 
and it's just off Mull, on the west coast of Scotland, and Aileen was there, and Aileen saw this book, because Aileen used to be a Sunday school teacher and a focus leader, and she thought that you would enjoy it. So, you know, it was meant to be Aileen, because I read it and I thought, you know, that's a much nicer story than what I already had, so no, no, much nicer story, so... I'll read you this lovely story, and it's called Finn, the Little Seal. Finn, the Little Seal. Once there was an island in a big sea, and there in the rocky shore lived a little seal called Finn and his mother. There he is there. There's Finn and his mother. Oh, what are you eating? They look good. When his big mother went, when his mother went out into the big sea to look for food, Finn had to stay behind on his bed of seaweed. Somebody, someday soon you'll be able to swim with me, said his mother. And the little seal looked at the great waves as they crashed on the rocks. The big sea is far too big for me, he thought. Do you think the big sea is too big for him? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. (laughs) You looking too? Yeah. While his mother was away, Finn sat on his bed of seaweed beside a rock pool, and there was a lot to see. There were starfish, a crab, there was seaweed, oysters, and anemones, limpets, and periwinkles. What was that again? A crab. A crab who scuttled with their shells on their backs. Finn liked the rock pool. The water is clear and still, not dark and deep like the big sea, thought the little seal. The big sea is far too big for me, so he liked the rock pool. Have you ever seen a, a wee rock pool? Yeah. yeah, he liked that, but not the big sea. That was far too scary. I'll just let you see the pictures there. Okay. One day, as Finn stared at his reflection in the clear waters of the rock pool, a new sleek face appeared. It was another seal. Hello, I'm Sula, she said. I'm on my way to the sea. Do you want to come and play with me? So there's his new friend. Yeah, Yeah. what's her name? Sula. Sula, that's right. Excited to get into the water, Sula hurried up to the rock edge and dived in happily, and she popped her head above the waters. Come in, you'll love it. We are seals. We belong to the sea. Finn really wanted to join his new friend, but not in the big sea. I'm sorry, he said, but the big sea is far too big for me. Finn just wanted to stay in the rock pool. He didn't want to go into the big sea. Finn's days by the rock pool were happy. As he grew, his fluffy white fur fell away, revealing a smooth grey coat beneath. One cold and windy morning, Finn's mother said it was time for him to leave their little island and join her in the water. You'll love it, she says. We are seals. We belong to the sea. Do you think he's going to love it, Finn? Do you think he's going to love the sea? Yeah, yeah. She called to him, come on, Finn, you'll love it. You'll love it, cried Sula. Finn shuffled to the rock edge. He looked out at the never-ending water, at the crashing waves. He looked down, down, down into the deep. No, he said. He says, no, I can't. The big sea is still far too big for me. But just then, a great wave washed over him and swept him in. So he didn't want to go into the sea, but this big wave crashed over him and swept him in. So he didn't have a choice. Here you go. Oh my, look. He's away down in the depths of the sea. Yes. Away down in the depths of the sea. Just like that man, there's a man that was reading in the paper yesterday that he swam around Loch Ness for two days and two nights. And Loch Ness is one of the deepest 
lochs, in fact, the deepest bodies of water in the whole of the UK. So there he is, away down. He was in the sea. He tumbled and fumbled and rolled under the waves. Then he saw something familiar. Look, there were starfish and seaweed, oysters and anemones, limpets and periwinkles. And there was, what are these again? Snails, that's right, snails, and there was, what's that? A crab. A crab, that's right, and what's that? Do you know what that is? A starfish. Starfish, very good. And these, the hermit crabs scuttled with their shells in their backs, just like they did in the rock pool. Finn didn't feel scared anymore. And then right beside him was his friend, Sula. Don't you love it? She said, we are seals, we belong to the sea. Come on, let's play. And together, Finn and Sula whittled through the waves. They whittled through the waves. And from Finn, the little seal, decided he wasn't so little anymore. And though the sea was big, it was full and exciting. And he belonged. So there he is, happy in the sea now with his friend, Sula, happy in the sea with his friend, Sula. Thank you for listening. And it says, this heartwarming story is about growing up and embracing new experiences set in Scotland's beautiful Outer Hebrides. So you've just started the, is it the nursery? Yes. Yes. And have you started anything, Oliver? Nursery? Not yet? No, still too wee. <laughs> and what about you, Matt? It's Matthew, isn't it? Uh huh. What about you, Matthew? What primary are you in? Five. five. How are you finding out primary five? Is it good? Yeah, you're enjoying it. Sometimes quite scary, though, isn't it? Going into a new year. I remember getting quite anxious over the summer holidays, wondering what the new teacher was going to be like and how it would be, but you're enjoying it fine. Well, that's good. And you've got good friends. Yeah, that always helps, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think this story basically tells us that, you know, we need other people, doesn't it, to help us, to help us through all the changes in life. Hey, because you've got your mummy and your daddy and your, your granny to help you and your wee brother as well, haven't you? You're three and Oliver is one, that's right. And you, he, you're going to be a big help to him, aren't you? And you're going to help keep him safe when he goes to school. Yes. yes. Uncle, this gives me closed. What's that? It's closed. What's closed? The school. Oh, the school's closed, that's right, because you're off for the September holiday, that's right. I know you're a clever boy, so you are. So anyway, going back to this story... Because coming to church, you know, we believe that God also looks after us and God also keeps us safe and God is always there. So, you know, when you're at school and you're worried about anything, you can always just say a wee prayer to God. You just need to shut your eyes and say, God, help me, help me to be strong or help me to, with this exam or help me with this new thing that's happening at the school or and you can tell God what you're worried about and you can tell your mummy and daddy as well it's very important to tell them too and God promises that he, he's there all the time anyway yeah. but sometimes it helps us if we can pray to God and it helps us become aware that he's already there anyway looking after us yeah, yeah that's right so we're never alone so thank you for listening to my story and answering all the questions as well. And you knew all the, the, the animals in the sea. Yeah. Yes, you did. You were very good. So you're a clever boy. And uh, we're now going to sing that lovely hymn, which is 189. It's 189. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. And thank you to Aileen for our lovely book. Thank you. I'll definitely use that one again. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to look at it?
first reading is from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Jesus teaching on prayer. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, forgive our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you though, he will not get up and give him the bread because he is a friend. Yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Choir will now sing the anthem, God, you have brought us to this place.
The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written? For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word, and to him be all honour, glory, and praise. We continue our worship by singing hymn number 608, number 608, Spirit of Truth and Grace. John Ortberg, the Christian writer and former senior pastor of Menlo Church in California, tells the story of the time he took his three children into an empty auditorium of the church where he worked. As he sat at the back enjoying the stillness, one of his children said, Daddy, preach to us. And he says that this was a wonderful moment, so I thought carefully about what to say to them as I wanted to get it right. I wanted to tell my children more than anything else that they could live in the loving care of God. So I told them the story of a movie called The Bear. 
It is a saga of a tiny beer cup whose mother dies, but the cup survives. But the viewer knows that his long-term chances of survival are nil. And then the unexpected happens. The little cub gets more or less adopted by an enormous Kodiak, which is a Canadian brown bear, which grows to a very large size. This giant Kodiak bear in the movie is always watching the cub. The Kodiak bear protects it from the mountain lion, which has been stalking him. The Kodiak bear teaches the cub how to be a bear, and everything the Kodiak bear does, the cub imitates. He waddles in a stream and stabs at fish. He stands on two legs and scratches his back against a tree, as the large Kodiak bear does. And you watch this movie as a viewer, and you're filled with hope. The cub has a future. The cub is going to live. But one day, the little bear is separated from the Kodiak bear, and he can't see him, find him anywhere. And the mountain lion has never forgotten the cub, and now he finally sees his opportunity. And so the mountain lion comes swiftly, silently, face to face with the cub. He is about to spring, and the little bear does what he's seen the Kodiak bear do. He rears up on his hind legs, he lifts his paws, he tries to growl fiercely, but the best he can manage is a frightened squeak. And the mountain lion is not convinced. Both the cub and his attacker know that the little bear is about to die. And so in the movie, the camera focuses on the mountain lion, but all of a sudden, his face registers a look of fear. The mountain lion stops snarling and turns and slinks away. And then the camera turns to the cub. He is as surprised as anyone watching. Could his little growl have worked so well? But then the camera moves back. And we see what we did not know was there. We see what the little bear cannot, for behind that little bear is the great Kodiak bear. Standing on his hind legs, his massive body poised to save the little bear with a single swipe, big paws and a fierce growl. And then we know that the little bear had nothing to worry about. The cub couldn't see him or hear him, but the Kodiak bear his adopted father was there all the time. And so that forest was a perfectly safe place for the little cub to be. And the father, the Kodiak bear, could be trusted even when he seemed to be absent. The father could be trusted even when he seemed to be absent. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus teaches his disciples their special prayer, and then he tells the parable of the persistent neighbor who approaches his friend at midnight, asking him for three loaves of bread to feed an unexpected visitor. Jesus tells us how the friend tells the neighbor to go away and not to bother him at this late hour. But Jesus then goes on to say that the friend will ultimately give in and respond to the neighbor's needs because of the neighbor's boldness. Jesus then says to his disciples not to hesitate to ask, to seek and knock, for the door will be open to them. He then describes how human fathers would not give their child a snake if he asks for a fish, or a scorpion if he asks for an egg. So how much more will their Father in heaven give to them if they ask him? Jesus seems to be addressing doubts within the disciples of God's goodness and care to them. Jesus seems to sense that the disciples are, are really not sure if God has their best interest at heart. They are not sure if they can trust God with their lives. They are not sure if God really will keep them safe. And they are finding it difficult to place their trust in God. 
And interestingly, in today's scripture text, Jesus starts the prayer by addressing God as Father, which in Aramaic translates as Daddy. Jesus is trying to teach the disciples that God knows them intimately. He cares for them as a father cares for his son. Jesus is breaking down all the preconceptions of God being distant and aloof, uninterested in us as individuals, or too almighty and powerful to take the time to listen to our simple requests. Jesus is basically saying to his disciples, you can trust God with your lives. You can share your deepest thoughts with God in prayer and he will listen. You can speak to him as you would a loving earthly parent and he will protect you and he will keep you safe. Just like the Kodiak bear did to the little cub when the mountain lion appeared. But it's so much easier said than done. So often we fail to trust God with our lives because we don't believe that he will protect and keep us safe. How can he when we live in a world of so much which is unexpected, a world where illness can strike out of the blue, when accidents can happen, when tragedies can befall? The author Dallas Willard writes that Jesus lived a life of utter trust because he understood his father to be unfailingly competent and wholly devoted. Willard says, with this magnificent God positioned among us, Jesus brings us the assurance that our universe is a perfectly safe place for us to be. Our universe is a perfectly safe place for us to be. But the universe just seems so unsafe, especially as we have just lived through two years of a pandemic, especially as we are facing recession, especially as our NHS is increasingly struggling to cope, especially as there is a war and talk of a nuclear, especially as our queen who is always there has just died, especially as our church is in a time of crisis. Our universe just seems so unsafe. And yet, throughout scripture, we find that in lions' dens and fiery furnaces and in Pharaoh's prison and the floor of the Red Sea, we find in a, in a battered little boat in the midst of a violent storm on the Sea of Galilee, all of these places that seemed so dangerous turned out to be the safe, safest places of all. And the truth is that God is by our side, always, even when we don't recognize God, even when we don't take the time to turn to God, God is with us always. And therefore, our universe is a perfectly safe place for us to be, not because bad things won't happen in it or at times happen to us, but because as Paul had come to realize, that there is nothing that can ever separate us from God's love, neither hardship or distress or, or persecution or famine or, or nakedness or peril or sword. The reality is that the worst weapons that this world can unleash upon us, even death itself, are powerless before the love of God, God's love, which holds us safe in this life and into eternity. And this is also the discovery of the psalmist who says in the 23rd Psalm that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no harm, for you are with me. So even the valley of the shadow of death is a safe place to be. I remember during my probation going to visit people who were dying 
in some very sad circumstances and asking my probation supervisor, what can I say to them apart from just being there? And he said to me, Louise, he said, just tell them, tell their families, tell them that they're safe, that their loved one is safe. That's all you need to say. Tell them that they are safe. And despite the difficult times within our lives, God proves to us that he is with us in so many different ways. Through the kindness of hospital staff when we undergo tests or an operation, or through the love and support of family and friends, when we are going through an emotional trauma, through scripture verse or hymn, through unexpected encounter, through the wonder of nature, God proves he is with us through all these things and that whatever happens in our life, his unfailing love will forever keep us safe. And when things threaten to overwhelm us, when we, like the little cub in the story at the beginning, face the mountain lions, behind us stands the one whose watching is unceasing. We may not see him or hear him, but our Father is there all the time, and nothing in this universe can ever separate us, as Paul says, from his love. Jesus taught the disciples the prayer which we now know as the Lord Prayer, addressing God as Daddy. And he then told the disciples through his parable that God could be trusted with their lives, that God was always there, that no matter what happened to them, what circumstances they found themselves in, they would be eternally safe. And so they could approach God in prayer with a sense of security and confidence. It's a bit like the story of the young boy whose father had been working long shifts for months and decided to take time off work and take his son away for the day. It was the middle of winter and the weather forecast was very poor and most places were going to be shut. But the night before, the excited boy went to his father's room and he says, Dad, I just want to thank you for tomorrow. The boy knew with complete confidence that whatever might be the circumstance, what mattered most was being in the care of someone he trusted, someone he thought the world of, who would somehow bring all things to a good and worthwhile end. And so we too can approach God with confidence. And if we feel able or want to, we can address, Je address God as Jesus did, as dad or daddy, for he always has our best interests at heart. And despite life circumstances, he will somehow bring all things to a good and worthwhile end. And he stands behind us and all around us. And one day we'll hear the roar and we'll see the hands that even now are holding our own, even when we don't recognize it. And so till then, we are called to walk in faith and trust and confidence, knowing that with God beside us, and God is beside all people, knowing that God with God beside us, the universe is a safe place for us to be this day and into eternity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We now sing that beautiful hymn, number 485, number 485, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
And in response to the uplifting of the offering, Jane will now play some offer, offer tray music. Let us pray. Generous God, you are a God whose love knows no bounds, a God who has created our world with enough resources to feed all, a God who weeps when we do not share what we have with others. Generous God, all we are and all we have is a gift from you, and so take us and this gift of our offering, and use us and this money to further the work of your church in our world, to work towards a fairer and more just world where none are hungry and all have a shelter in Jesus' precious name. Healing God, we now bring before you our prayers for the world and for others. And we pray for our world where there is talk of unleashing nuclear weapons. We pray for our world where women are killed for showing their face. We pray for our world where people are fleeing for their lives due to floods caused by climate change. We pray for our world for those who are poor, those who are oppressed, those who are denied justice. We pray for all that you would be with them and strengthen them in your love. Lord God, we pray for those for whom this past week has been difficult and painful due to the late Queen's death and the funeral coverage, which has highlighted their own grief and their own pain at the loss of a loved one. And we pray that they would know that their loved one is now safe in your care and there's nowhere safer any of us can ever be. Lord God, closer to home, we pray for our own country. Your long NHS waiting lists are causing people to become weaker and experience heightened pain. And we especially pray for all who work in our healthcare system, trying to do their best in a very difficult period of time post-pandemic. Strengthen and sustain them and help us all to be a little more patient and understanding and grateful for the healthcare that we do have. 
Lord God, as autumn beckons and the nights draw in, we pray for those who are worried about rising heating costs. We pray for those within our community and city who will have to choose between a hot meal or a, a warm living room. We pray for businesses whose costs are about to rise hugely and the subsequent effect this will have on job security. Oh God, we live in such uncertain times, so help each one of us to do what we can to help one another. Similar to the pandemic, may we look out for neighbours and those within our community this autumn and winter who are most vulnerable and offer them a smile or a listening ear or a hot meal or some soup. Help us to look out for one another as we face a difficult winter. Lord God, we pray for our church, our denomination, having to prepare for change. Be with us all as we navigate this unknown territory. And help us to know that you are with us and you will keep us forever safe. And in the next few moments of silence, we bring before you our own prayers, the quiet thoughts of our hearts, the worries, concerns that we have of other people. And as we release our prayers and thoughts to you, may we and them know something of your comfort wrapping around us like a soft, thick pile blanket, keeping us safe. Loving God, thank you for listening to our prayers here today. Prayers which are never in vain, for each prayer of our heart is eternal and held forever in the palm of your hand, safely and securely this day and forevermore. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, number 517, number 517, Fight the Good Fight with All Your Might.
Go now, knowing that you are forever safely held in the arms of the loving God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is with you and keeps you safe this day and forevermore.